Hello, everybody. I'm Denise Koch. And I'm Nikki Zizaza. Welcome to those of you watching on CBS News Baltimore and on WJZ TV. Our coverage of the Key Bridge collapse continues, and we've been on air since early this morning as we follow all of these developments. So let's see this video that has been shared over and over around the world. It shows the collapse, which took place at just after 1.30 this morning. A massive search and rescue mission remains underway. At least six people are still unaccounted for in the waters of the Patapsco. We know at least two were rescued from the water. One refused treatment. The other was taken to shock trauma where he was released this afternoon. And we have live team coverage this evening with crews spread out across the area. We begin with Rick Ritter near the scene in Pasadena with the latest. Good evening, Rick. Nikki, Denise, good evening. From the time that we woke up this morning, we've talked about it. That pit in your stomach is still sitting here right now because six of those workers still unaccounted for at this hour. And with only about two and a half hours left of sunlight, you know that these next couple of hours are extremely crucial in the search and rescue operation. As again, the governor said hope is very much still alive as they are searching for these six construction workers who were on that bridge at the time of this crash and collapse and your heart aches for these families and what they're going through waiting for answers we know these men they came from overseas and were part of this construction group many of them lived right in Dundalk and Highland Town fathers sons who now their families are left here waiting desperate from some good news to come through as the governor said these hour or the search rescue operation continues into the night uh, as you can see behind me over my shoulder that is what is left of the key bridge after that cargo ship crashed right into it the feeling of disbelief hard to take in and come to grips that this is the reality this community and this state is dealing with tonight. We have a slew of reporters who will touch on everything from the emotional toll this is having on the community to the ripple effect it is having on the local economy and the Port of Baltimore. And our team coverage now continues with Kelsey Kushner. She is live for much more on that press conference where we heard from the governor and Pete Buttigieg who said this is bridge behind me was one of the cathedrals of American infrastructure. Kelsey. Yeah, Rick, you know, it really is a race against time right now. As we know, the sun is going to be setting pretty soon. Now, behind me here in Dundalk is where you can see part of that bridge. Now, there are a few uh, mobile units that are blocking the actual structure that is crumbled now in the water, but you can see where the bridge lets off at the end. Now, we have been out here all day getting, you know, updated information from the governor from NTSB. Just to give you a little bit of background, NTSB officials said that container ship, 985 feet long, 95,000 tons that slammed into that bridge early this morning. They said NTSB is taking kind of a step back right now to let the Coast Guard continue their search and rescue efforts. There's a team of 24 experts that are collecting information on the company's safety records, the owner and operator, company policy, operations, and maintenance structural engineers. They're going to be examining what is left of the key bridge. However, they are waiting for that search and rescue efforts to continue. Once they get that green light, then they will kind of enter into that second phase um, of the investigation. We did hear from Governor Moore not too long ago. He was praising the first responders who stepped up to help out. He said he spent time with the families today, praying for the families. Uh, take a listen to what he had to say about today. There's going to be a long road. There's going to be a long road, not just as we go from search and rescue. There'll be a long road as we talk about what does the future of this region, the future of the area look like. And we're going to need each and every one of you. We're thankful to have partners like what we have in the Biden-Harris administration. We're thankful for the partners that we have in our federal delegation. We're thankful for the partners we have in our state and local leadership. We're thankful for the partners that we have in the private sector and the philanthropic community. We're thankful for the partners that we have within the Moore Miller administration. We're thankful for each and every one of you, both Marylanders and non-Marylanders who have reached out and offered support. We feel it. We need it. And we are truly grateful for it. And I think just in this time, this state has been able to show what it means to be Maryland tough and Baltimore strong. And this state and this city will continue to show exactly that. 
POWERFUL WORDS THERE FROM THE GOVERNOR. AGAIN, HE FOCUSES ON THE LONG ROAD, NOT JUST AS WE GO FROM THE SEARCH AND RESCUE, BUT WHAT DOES THE FUTURE OF THIS REGION LOOK LIKE? U.S. SECRETARY OF TRANSPORTATION, PETE BUTTIGIEG, TALKED ABOUT THIS, uh, this ROAD RIGHT HERE, CALLING THIS AN ARTERY IN BALTIMORE, THE MAIN LINE. HE SAID, QUOTE, A CATHEDRAL OF BALTIMORE. THIS IS NOT AN ORDINARY ROAD. HE SAID IT WAS AN EXCRUCIATING DAY FOR FAMILIES WHO WENT TO BED LAST NIGHT. YOU KNOW, A NORMAL NIGHT WOKE UP TO SEEING THIS OUT THEIR WINDOW. A LOT OF FAMILIES NOW, YOU KNOW, TERRIFIED fight for what the future may hold for their family members who are now still being, you know, in, uh, involved in that search and rescue. Uh, they talked about, you know, emergency funding that will be approved to rebuild and reconstruct, but of course, we just don't know how long that road to reconstruction will be. Rick uh, Kelsey, a lot of unanswered questions still tonight, and you mentioned it. That's the other part of things, the impact this is going to have, the ripple effect on the local economy and really throughout the entire country with the Port of Baltimore being one of the busiest ports in the entire United States. And we spoke with the president of the port a little bit earlier who talked about it being the number one in terms of automakers getting cars in and out of the port, coal exporting as well as sugar and the material used to make drywall inside of homes. And this bridge was a huge part of that. So with that entryway being shut down for vessels to get in or out to the port, it means the port right now is only open on the ground and for trucks to go in and out, not open on water. Still, when you look off into the distance behind me and you see what is left of this and you sit there and you imagine the grief that is going through these families' minds right now as they hold on to hope, praying desperate for some good news to come out in these search and rescue operations with only a couple hours now left of sunlight, which will absolutely make this situation much more dire.